लेकिन इन सब के बीच हम पहले आपको सीधे लिए चल रहे हैं काठमांडू ग्लोबल राउंड टेबल एज यू हर्ड दिस इज अ सेकेंड राउंड टेबल आफ्टर न्यूयॉर्क ड्यूरिंग द प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स विजिट इन अमेरिका प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी सो वेरी हैप्पी दैट वी कुड एक्सटेंड दिस टू अनदर लोकेशन काठमांडू एट अ वेरी अप्रोप्रिएट टाइम वेरी क्रिटिकल टाइम फॉर ऑल द कंट्रीज ऑफ साक I would like to especially welcome all the participants from all parts of South Asia who have travelled from their respective countries to be here in Kathmandu. As some of you have found that connectivity is one of the biggest issues, even getting here is a problem. So, I think it highlights the issues of of SARC. As we enter the 30th anniversary of SARC, it's a good time to take stock of what has been achieved and what remains to be done. Sadly, SARC's track record has been somewhat dismal. compared to other groupings the, but the fact that it continues to exist i think is a cause for celebration yet when you at a forum like this we should put our cynicism aside even if it's just for a day who knew india would have a single party full majority government in 2014 it happened just like the democratic revolution continuing democratic revolution in nepal the completion of a full term by an elected government in pakistan followed by a smooth democratic transfer of power the defeat of ltte in sri lanka and subsequent efforts to devolve power to the tamil population gradual transformation to democracy in bhutan and the great experiment in afghanistan the evolution of democracy in the region is its greatest opportunity reflecting aspirations and a desire to grow So is this a new political moment to seize? I hope our round table will provide some answers. I'm also very grateful to the president of Afghanistan, His Excellency Ashraf Ghani Ahmadzai, for consenting to be the keynote speaker of this conclave. You will hear him later this afternoon. With the imminent withdrawal of foreign troop, troops, he has to shepherd his country through another difficult but yet necessary transition. And so the question why are we here and why is India today interested in leading the charge in promoting this discussion in South Asia on the kind of region that we want to be the answer is simple South Asia is our home and like in our homes we need to be good neighbors this round table is our little contribution to bring about a better understanding of each other Kathmandu is an appropriate place to reach out to each other as it seems to have the least contentious issues with its neighbors it helps to know what our problems are for several of us terrorism tops the list for others it's poverty or lack of good governance or perhaps even something as fundamental as democracy and as the rule of law the truth is that despite the passage of the decades many of us have remained victims of ancient animosities hidebound bureaucracies as well as a political class that is unwilling to think out of the box on a sustained basis so when indian prime minister narendra modi invited all the heads of sark to the swearing in in may this year and all these leaders responded so generously by attending there was hope for new beginnings but as is the case quite often only a few months later the most important relationship in the region the india pakistan one went into a dizzying tailspin Therefore it is no surprise that we begin our round table with a session on India Pakistan exploring possibilities of friendship at a time when both countries are going through a no talk phase I think between Nalin Kohli national spokesperson of the BJP Mr Manish Tiwari former minister of information and broadcasting of India and Hina Ramani Khar former foreign minister of Pakistan we have the relevant cross section of views well covered We often hear other South Asian countries complain how the Indo-Pak conflict has held up and even pushed back the SAC project which is why this bilateral conversation is not only important but tests the largest sense of responsibility of both these preeminent powers of the region Terrorism for example which has been one of our most contentious issues between several countries has seen some progress In the past few months Indian agencies uncovered anti-Bangladesh terror modules mushrooming on Indian soil with the intent of allegedly carrying out series of explosions across Bangladesh. 
Interagency cooperation between both countries was critical in neutralizing this terror venture early in the day. There have been examples of such cooperation between India and Nepal, which is how key Indian Mujahideen terrorists were caught and also between India and Bhutan to target bases of Northeast insurgent outfits. Has the time come to upgrade this into a meaningful regional platform of seamless and real-time cooperation? We have a discussion structured around this theme, and for once, there will be a bag full of examples to add meat to a theme that is often, like many South Asian projects, been dubbed a non-starter. The truth is that for the sake of our future generations, each country in the SARC space must insulate the vicious politics that so often define us and refocus our energies on improving the lot of our people. For example, can the rivers that begin in Nepal and flow down to the lower riparian states, India, be transformed from their current states of flooding and destruction to the production of hydroelectricity? Our session on economic cooperation under SAFTA may discuss these issues because common and interloping regional infrastructure creates a more permanent and possibly an irreversible for e basis for economic cooperation of the kind one can see in the European Union or for that matter in ASEAN. As of now, however, the picture is discouraging given that just about 5% of the formal trade and the, members of, and the member countries is inter-regional in nature. Similarly, can we insulate India-Pakistan people's relationship from political issues like Kashmir and terrorism? Should we be able to trade and travel between Afghanistan, Pakistan and India, enabling our people, in the words of several of our former Prime Ministers, to have breakfast in Delhi, lunch in Lahore and dinner in Kabul? For a region of approximately 1.6 billion people, we're probably the least integrated on any socio-economic indicator in spite of a shared history of colonial rule. I would like to invoke here the metaphor of the Grand Trunk Road, built in the 1500s by an Afghan general, who hailed from North India from Jaunpur and briefly ruled over Delhi, who built a road that stretches from the present-day Pakistan to the eastern flank of his empire to Kolkata. As the largest country in the, re in the region, India's responsibility towards South Asia is necessarily also the greatest. But can we invoke this overarching metaphor of the great road that's, that spans the region, crossing several frontiers, remaining a lifeline of trade and commerce, as well as the greatest cultures, and opening up, if you like, a highway of the mind? What better way to do this than to bring some of the most respected political leaders of South Asia together over the best of this day, in the hope that we will speak frankly about all the issues, including those that divide us. But I think we also owe it to ourselves to listen with an open mind to what the other person across the table on the other side has to say. In this listening will lie the seeds of change. I would like to leave you with this thought. We are the children of the great Indus Valley civilization. We can be the largest and the most prosperous grouping in the world. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir. For the first session, may I now call on stage Rahul Kaval, the moderator of the session, managing editor, TV Today Group,